you very much. Um, I would like to begin to, uh, with thanking Sabrina because she made a very good case for RC versus steam cycle. And um, so my, my point is to explore a little more different uh, ORC possibilities with a focus on uh, refrigerant-based ORCs. Um, I would just like to add a little bit on the, uh, um, the border between uh, the steam cycle, where the steam cycle versus ORCs uh, overlap. Um, I would say that this is very sensitive to uh, um, the uh, labor costs and maintenance costs. And so what you see uh, as a relevant uh, of frontier between the two in Europe, for instance, is not the same in India or in China. But typically in Europe, I would say that uh, if you have a high temperature in source, by high, I mean above 300 Celsius, um, above 3 megawatts, uh, you may wonder whether uh, ORC or steam uh, cycle are more relevant. Um, uh, three, four megawatts, you have to consider both and see what is best. But when you're going in low temperatures, lower temperatures, then the ORC case in this case is quite clear. And that this is why I'm going to focus my presentation on lower temperatures. Um, so we have seen uh, that uh, there are starting to be quite a number of references in, in ORCs in the cement industry. And um, but most of them, as you have noticed, uh, are relying uh, on uh, thermal oil as a heat transfer fluid and silicon oil or other flammable fluids as working fluid. And there is a good reason for that, which is connected to the higher temperatures, typically above 300 Celsius. Uh, you have to, what I'm referring here in terms of temperatures is the loop temperature, is the thermal loop which is taking heat from the heat source of waste gas to the ORC. But when you see 300 or 230, this means that the gas uh, resource, the heat resource, is at least 50 Celsius above that. Um, so that's the state of the art and it's relevant in many cases. Um, however, there are some limitation to using uh, thermal oil and flammable fluids, um, which is one that uh, thermal oil is not free. Uh, it's about uh, four euro per, per liter, and thermal oil, thermal oil ages, so it has to be replaced after some time. Um, then uh, I'd like to underline that um, the heat exchange area, that is to say the size of the heat exchanger you need to install on the flow of waste gas, will grow um, with uh, thermal oil compared to water because the heat exchange quality is not as good. Um, then, of course, thermal oil and flammable fluids create hazards, which, of course, can be mitigated, but this means costs, and there is still a risk attached to that, uh, especially if, if you have oxygen left in waste gas, typically in an HUC, uh, in an air-cooled uh, in, in, on the paper cooler side, uh, you have a lot of you have air, basically, so you have a lot of oxygen, and uh, fiber hazard is not to be taken lightly. Um, then finally, because there is a lot more oil than compared to uh, a water-based heat exchanger, and because of viscosity, higher viscosity of oil versus, versus water, you need a bigger pump. So this may be, be relevant in a high temperature heat resource, but it's going to result in higher costs in lower temperature heat resources. Um, this is from a German uh, engineering company uh, which have been reviewed different solutions uh, for geothermal projects and they have been comparing two refrigerants uh, R245AFA and R507 to two flammable fluids, isopentane and isobutane. And I just want, I'm not going to go through the, the details, but in the case of flammable fluids, you have a lot of work to do with regard to risk mitigation, uh, to deal with flammability, to deal with explosion risks, 
to deal with toxicity. So uh, both from the regulatory standpoint to gain authorization to operate the plant and also from the pure point of uh, designing your waste if recovery system, you have to spend a lot of time to go through all these hazards, mitigation, necessities. And you don't have it uh, uh, for uh, refrigerants. However, on the refrigerant side, you have one drawback, which is the uh, high GWP, the high global, global warming potential. Uh, now the refrigerants, which are being used mostly, have zero ODP, but they still retain a high GWP, typically in the thousands, so it's a thousand more, uh, it has a thousand more times the effect on the global warming than CO2. And, uh, but these uh, refrigerants have a cost, and manufacturers spend a lot of time making sure that such refrigerants stay within the system. The issue of global warming with refrigerants um, is typically for cars or refrigerators, which at the end of life are going to be uh, sent to a shredding machine. So if they are not properly emptied, then you have, um, you have uh, refrigerants going into the atmosphere. But we are talking here of industrial machines, closely monitored. And when you know the price of a refrigerant, which can be 24 euro per kg, then you can be sure that both manufacturers and operators are going to make sure that the refrigerant stays inside. Uh, so I think the benefits far outweigh the, uh, the drawbacks. Um, you could say that uh, this risk is theoretical. Well, this photo shows that it isn't. Sometimes risks become situations. Um, of course, it is rare, but it does happen. And you cannot rule out the fact that in a heat exchanger which is exposed to uh, um, uh, aggressive materials, which is the case in the cement plant, that someday you have a leak. And uh, we have installed an ORC on a foundry, uh, and we know that in this foundry, where they, they have been facing leaks every now and then. Um, so these sort of things can happen. So, we can make ORCs are user friendly. They are easy to use, they accept varying load, but we can make them even more user friendly, especially when the heat source is below 300 Celsius. The first benefit is that um, if you have uh, such heat resource, you can use water, superheated water as heat transfer without getting into very high pressure. Typically, you will have around 20, 25 bar superheated water, which is quite standard in the industry. And you will have the benefit of a smaller, uh, oh, sorry, of a smaller uh, heat exchanger, and you will, of course, avoid fire hazard and decrease costs. Because heat exchange surface is, means weight. And weight means a bigger steel structure and bigger, bigger um, cities. Uh, with your foundations. So this is adding to cost. Um, then if you use a refrigerant uh, as working fluid, you will reduce hazard on the ORC itself. Uh, this is an example of um, a um, cycle we use. So we have a um, superheated water loop. Uh, which goes into the heat exchanger, which is not shown here. You would have to consider that it is on the left hand side. Um, so we send uh, superheated water at 110 Celsius, and then we get superheated water out at 220. And that's quite easy to achieve uh, you can, with uh, 270 Celsius gases. So this water. I mean, the, the, the ORC cycle has been described, I'm not going to do it again, but this uh, heat, um, this uh, loop is taking the heat to the ORC, which works in a closed loop, as you have seen. Um, I'd like to uh, spend some time on a case study. I can disclose where it is exactly, but it's in a hot country where there are water constraints. So we have been uh, doing the preliminary engineering uh, for this plant, which has two cement, two kin lines, two small kins, uh, with uh, such uh, uh, 
gases as you see here, 260,000 normal cubics at 275 Celsius. And we take it down, we cool it down with this 110 uh, water loop uh, up to, to 140 Celsius. And we get out of that 12 megawatt problem. Uh, on the uh, recovery uh, exchanger on the on, installed on this flow of, of gas, we have uh, 125 ton of water circulating, uh, so which comes out at 220 Celsius. And when you see the quantity of water involved, you have to consider that if this is oil, so it's 125,000 times four euro. If you want to know the price of oil in the system. Um, and uh, we get out of this 1.7 megawatt electrical gross, gross um, and uh, the uh, net output is 1.3. I'm going to detail the difference between gross and net afterwards. Um, so in this project, there are two hot water generators. Uh, well, basically, basically, I'm going to give you a price idea, and I just want to highlight here that this is covering the complete system from the, uh, the basically, the plant has nothing to do. We are delivering uh, a turnkey system, uh, doing whatever modification that has to be done, and installing two ORCs, one per lap. Um, we checked the preheater side, but decided not to equip the preheater for two reasons. The heat available in the preheater was relatively low. It was about half the heat power we had on the AQC. And um, the um, installation of the heat exchanger was costly because of the height issues and because we had to increase the capacity of the ID fab. So when we were counting all the costs uh, related to installing and a recovery on the preheater side, it was actually deteriorating the business case of the recovery. So we decided to go only on the AQ side. Um, of course, so electrical connections, in that particular case, we are producing directly 6.6 kV uh, power on the generator, which is consistent with the plant grid. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, we replace everything that is needed to operate the system. Now from gross to net, often uh, when uh, net power is given, it's given just uh, looking at the ORC, but in fact uh, there are a lot of other auxiliary consumption in an ORC project. The uh, heat exchanger, especially a large heat exchanger like you have in the center, <coughs> is requiring power. So I wanted to do a complete uh, check of all auxiliary uh, consumptions and you see that starting from 7, 1700 kilowatts, we have to remove the pump, RC pump consumption, lubrication consumption, and then you have 1.5, a little bit of 1.5 for the RC, but then you have to remove the water loop uh, pump and the dry cooling. And here we have an air cool condenser. So we, uh, we were in a case where we were not allowed to use any water. And uh, therefore, we have, and we are in a hot country, so the design is for a 36 Celsius environment, and uh, we uh, have to use a very large uh, air cooled condenser, and that's why you have such a high uh, consumption uh, for, for this uh, air cooled condenser. And so that's how you go from 1700 to uh, a little bit below 1300 kilowatts. Uh, total investment, uh, of course it's not the exact figure, but just to give you a feel, uh, is about 10 uh, million euros for 3.4 megawatts. In fact, the capacity installed is 4 megawatts, but the actual output or mean output is 3.4. And uh, so, which is in the league of 3,000 euro per kilowatt installed. Uh, that's Facts that ORC are not cheap on the investment side, but uh, one really has to consider the life cycle cost of the ORC because operation, as has been, as has been pointed out, 
it's operational, the costs are much lower than that of a steam cycle. And in this particular case, was no, while no water consumption uh, is allowed, uh, or else is basically the only solution available. Just a few words about us. So we are much smaller and much younger company like, uh, uh, compared to to, to uh, But uh, we are already uh, seven years old, so we are starting to grow. And uh, we are based in France, but we are already very international. Uh, we have some people in uh, some French islands far away, in India, in the Philippines. Uh, we are now starting to be active in China. We just signed a three megawatt uh, project uh, with Bao Shan Steel in China, uh, in steel yeah. plant. Um, and we have various partnerships with uh, European universities. We um, define ourselves as uh, being specialized in turbo machinery. Uh, we design our own turbines. We are also working on uh, heat pumps and work on compressors. And uh, you find here the variety of applications that uh, every OLC manufacturer will tell you of, because indeed it's a very flexible uh, solution. And we work on the, along the whole value chain. So we can either do turnkey, if it's not too big projects, if it's a very big project, we are going to turn to bigger EPCs and ourselves, but if, uh, if it is a small project, we will do it, uh, if requested by the customer, we will do it ourselves, or we can just supply the URC depending on what the customer wants. And this is it. Thank you for listening.